Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video is a sit down, just chatty video with an update, actually a couple updates for you guys. Um, so I'll be honest with you, I am emotionally not in the best place with some news that we just got. So I don't think I'll be doing any crazy transitions in this video, any pop in and pictures here and there, like I don't have it in me, but I did feel the need to update you guys on a few things, especially for those of you that have been following our journey uh, with the military, with Joe's retirement, the vaccine mandate, and also our move to Alaska that we have been working on for almost two years now. There's a lot that goes into that move, right? Selling our home, moving into this temporary apartment until we leave for Alaska. And it has been a roller coaster, uh, to say the least. So this video might upset some people. It will undoubtedly uh, bring in some nasty comments, but I'm used to that. <laughs> I've actually had a couple people say, you know, uh, they enjoy channels that aren't political. They enjoy channels that don't talk about politics. They enjoyed, then I encourage you to go watch those channels because our channel is about our life and our family. And unfortunately, politics and the things that are going on in our culture, they affect us just like they affect you. So whether you want to talk about it or not, or you want to bury your head in the sand and pretend like things aren't there and things aren't going on, that's your choice. But for me, I, I can't live my life like that, especially when things are affecting our family greatly. When it's impacting you, it's really hard to not acknowledge it and to pretend like it's not there. I refuse to sit here and act like life is honky dory and there's nothing wrong going on because that's not reality. Look at the culture that we're living in. That is not reality. And the answer is not to stick your head in the sand and like, la, 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 pretend like things aren't happening. That's not going to fix anything. So I will be deleting immediately nasty comments and blocking. People that message me and go, well, I did like your channel, but I just unsubscribed. Bye. Bye bye It doesn't hurt my feelings. In fact, it's probably a better channel with you not here because you're negative and you're nasty and I just don't want that in my space. So I say that to say, if you don't like it, you may leave. I wish you the best. I will pray for you. For those of you that want to stay and hear my, my uh, update today, <laughs> I'm happy to have you. You guys know last fall, the military came out with the COVID-19 vaccine mandate. Uh, we are in the Coast Guard. We were Army, but we are now Coast Guard. Um, we are a family that has chosen not to get this vaccine. We submitted for a religious accommodation from the Coast Guard. They've had over 1,400 religious accommodation requests, and they have approved four. So I'll leave that right there. Uh, our First Amendment right for freedom of religion is being violated. These members are being discriminated against and in some cases berated and treated horribly. It is so saddening to me to see these members of every branch that have sacrificed not only themselves, but their families, their babies' birthdays, the birth of their children, anniversaries with their wife, Christmas mornings to serve our country. And they're being treated like garbage because they're refusing to get an experimental vaccine that has proven time and time again to be ineffective. You have fully vaccinated and boosted people still contracting this virus. At first, it was supposed to keep you from getting it. And then when they realized, oh, crap, it's not effective, they changed it to say 
Well, it's just gonna lessen your symptoms and make it less likely that you'll be hospitalized. Well, fine, friend. If you're scared of getting sick and you don't wanna be hospitalized or whatever, and you wanna get the vaccine to maybe prevent that, then please do that. I support you, it's your body. If you've done that research and you feel safe doing that, then you do that. We do not. So we put in for a religious accommodation immediately within the time frame that the Coast Guard gave us. And I'm not even gonna go into the reasons why we are not okay with getting it. I have other videos and my podcast, Life with Tina, where I go into that more in depth. I'm just not going to go into that and I'm not going to uh, explain and justify our reasons to the negative Nellies and Normans out there because those of you that are in alignment with our views, you already know damn good and well why we will never get it. For those of you that don't understand our decision or you don't agree with it, that's fine. I'm not going to explain myself to you. Like I said, I have other videos and a, a podcast where I go in depth on why we are not getting it. Uh, our religious accommodation was denied. I've been keeping you guys updated on this since we started. We appealed the denial, the denial, excuse me, the appeal was denied. All of these members that have put in for these religious accommodation requests their requests have been denied, and these denials are canned templates. The members' names are changed out, and the wording is verbatim the same on every denial. It is disgusting. The policy requires them to look at these members' individual requests as just that, an individual request, and look at their circumstances, their religious convictions on why they can't get this vaccine, and they're supposed to make a decision based on that member and their circumstances, but they're not doing that. Last month, July 25th, the Coast Guard came out with a new message that said, within 30 days, every unvaccinated member would be processed for discharge, for separation, involuntary separation. Now they did have a caveat in there that commands could endorse that member if that billet was critical and they needed that member even if they were unvaccinated. They did say the command can put in that endorsement and request that doesn't mean it's going to be approved, right? After all, they said we could put in for a religious accommodation to not get the vaccine, but they did blanket denials on that and wasted all of our time all the members that took all the time to type up their requests, follow their checklist, get interviewed by medical, interviewed by the base chaplain, all the stupid hoops they made us jump through just to deny them all. So I'm not stupid enough to believe for one second that a command endorsement really means a damn thing. These people are hell bent on destroying the careers of unvaccinated members. And it doesn't matter their service. It doesn't matter where they've been, what they've done, what they've sacrificed, it doesn't matter. The military that Joe and I joined 20 years ago has changed. It is not the same military. It is woke and it is wicked. And to be honest with you guys, they're pushing out the strong, patriotic people that are willing to stand on what they believe and stand for what's right. And they're going to be left with a clump of pansies. People that say, well, I, I didn't want to get it, but I didn't have a choice. I had to get it. I didn't have a choice. I'm sorry if this pisses you off, but my opinion is you are wrong. You always have a choice, but you chose the easy route because it was easier. It was easier to get it than to fight it. Now, if you wanted to get it, that's one thing, but if you were convicted in your heart not to get it and you did your research and you knew that you didn't want to get it and it wasn't safe or how it was formulated or whatever your reasons are, but you allowed them to bully you and intimidate you into injecting something into your body that you didn't want, 
Nobody can do that to you. You chose to do it. And we are choosing not to do it. And because we're choosing not to do it and to claim our First Amendment rights of religious freedom, we are being persecuted for that. Joe is four and a half months away from retirement from 20 years of service to our country. You guys that are part of our YouTube family, you know we've been updating you on this. We are literally scheduled to start his terminal leave October 22nd in six weeks. He has like months of leave saved up. So he can take terminal leave and essentially get out early and we can move to Alaska and start our life. And then he would actually retire February 1st. Well, this message that came out that said all commands are required to process their unvaccinated members for discharge within 30 days, we're like, where does that leave us? Because let me tell you, it's not that Joe's retirement is still pending approval. It's, it's not. His, approve, his retirement is approved. He has retirement orders signed, sealed, and delivered authorizing payment of our ferry tickets to Alaska, authorizing our household goods shipment from Virginia to Alaska, authorizing the shipment of my vehicle and we're driving Joe's truck per diem for mileage, all the things, we're authorized that on these orders that have already been approved. His DD-214, which those of you that aren't military, that is your official discharge document your proof of military service. That's the, anybody that you go to apply for a loan, you go to apply for uh, veterans benefits, anything, they need a copy of your DD-214. That proves and shows your military service and your discharge code. Whether you were honorably discharged or dishonorably discharged, all of that is on your DD-214. Joe has already got that back signed with an honorable discharge. Joe called me today and said that his command told him that he will be getting his notice of intent for discharge within the week. The only two things that could save us at this point is the fact that we are a part of the class action lawsuit that was filed on behalf of the unvaccinated Coast Guard members the end of July. We filed for a emergency temporary restraining order that was denied. They're refiling for that. In fact, I think they refiled for that on Saturday, so four days ago, but we haven't heard word on the judge's decision. We're trying to get them to stop kicking people out, at least while this lawsuit is being heard. And we're praying for an injunction from the judge, just like they granted for the Air Force and the Marine Corps. The Air Force and the Marine Corps and the Navy have been granted injunctions, so those branches can no longer kick any members out that are unvaccinated. There is no ruling for uh, reinstatement of service or compensation. You guys, some of these members have already been kicked out. I have people that I know that have wives that are pregnant and babies at home that were in military housing and have been kicked out and don't have a place to go. There is no compensation for those people as of yet. But for the Coast Guard, and at least as of the time of this recording for the Army, there has been no injunctive relief for these vaccine mandates. And the Coast Guard is doing everything in their power to kick as many people out as they can, as fast as they can, before a judge puts the hammer down and says, stop. So the injunctive relief from a judge is one way that would save Joe's retirement because a lawsuit would take more than four and a half months and he retires in four and a half months. We need that injunction desperately. The other thing that could save him 
is his command's endorsement, which, thank God, Joe has a supportive command. They're all vaccinated, but they believe in choice. And I, I, I said I wasn't going to say this, but I just this is the comment that I get from people all the freaking time, and so I'm just going to address it. Well, when you went into boot camp, you had to get all those other shots, so what makes this one different? When I went into boot camp and I stood there, a lot of you don't know I was active duty too. I was in the Army and the Coast Guard, okay? Joe and I both went in together. When I went into boot camp, how many shots did we get in our arm? I didn't know what the hell they were. I didn't know how they were formulated. I didn't care. I was 18, 19 years old. Those vaccines were tested and had runtime to determine efficacy and safety. Those vaccines were FDA approved. So there is a huge difference between those and this vaccine for COVID. And I'm not even gonna go into the whole FDA approved or not approved. Do your research. I have a podcast on this exact topic where I explain what I mean by that. I'm not gonna go into it here, but just because we're military doesn't mean we don't have any rights. That is such a misconception. People think when you join the military, you sign your rights away. Incorrect. We still are U.S. citizens and we still fall under the Constitution of the United States of America. And the Constitution does not say these amendments, these rights apply to everybody in America except if you're active duty military. That thought process is warped. We have rights. So our First Amendment right to practice our freedom of religion, to not get this vaccine because of how it was formulated, is absolutely our right. We don't forfeit that just because we're military. That's ridiculous. If anything, military people should be <laughs> treated even more different because we're the ones out there fighting for our freedom. Everybody sits back and enjoys their freedom and these liberals and these people that think that this crap is just free. It's not free. People are dying. People have been dying since the beginning of our country for our freedom. And it's easy for them to sit back and take it for granted when you've never had to lose something for it. It's not free, you guys. And the very people that go out and go on the front lines to fight for our freedom, look what happened in Afghanistan. That withdrawal was a disaster. And the people that set it up should be in prison. So his command can put in an endorsement with the separation package that says, hey, we need this guy. We have a critical billet and we need him. If they do that and the Coast Guard approves it, then and only then can Joe stay in until his retirement. But that all depends on how convincing his captain's letter is, what he writes in it. You know what I'm saying? That is so dependent upon so many factors. So an injunction from a judge and his command's endorsement to keep him are the only two things at this point that are going to save his retirement. Now, there's a whole other side of this that causes so much stress for us. Because of this notice of intent to discharge him and not allow him to retire, we don't know what that means. Does that cancel his retirement orders that were already approved? Because we were supposed to schedule ferry tickets. We were supposed to schedule our household goods to be picked up and shipped. We were supposed to schedule my car to be shipped. Like all of these things, now it's like, does that cancel that? Can we not, are those orders not uh, good anymore? <laughs> like, so I'm certainly not going to act like they are and leave October 22nd, ship my car, ship my household goods, book the ferry tickets, because with our luck, we'll be driving across country to go to Alaska 
then the Coast Guard will come back with their decision and say, mm, nope, your package was denied. We're still going to kick you out. And then what? I have no idea where we're at now, friends. Hey guys, so I, really quick, I am editing this video for you guys and I just wanted to kind of let you know, Joe and I talked last night about this even more in depth and we have decided that since we do have approved retirement orders authorizing his retirement and his travel and his terminal leave start date of October 22nd, we are going to execute those orders unless we hear different. Uh, before October 22nd. If we don't hear anything by October 22nd, we're going to execute those orders. And the notice of intent to discharge is just that. It's a notice of intent that they are intending on discharging him, which obviously hinges on a lot of factors, whether his command makes an endorsement for him or whatever. So we almost decided to delay our move and everything out of fear of the unknown and not knowing how this was going to turn out or what they were going to do. But the reality, other people that have already gotten their notice of discharge, um, haven't been discharged yet. And it's been like a month and a half. So these processes take a long time. So why in the world would we delay our move ourselves just out of fear of the unknown? Like we would delay our move for what? We're going to go ahead and execute these orders. We're rolling out October 22nd. And then once we're in Alaska, if they decide they're going to deny his package and kick him out, then they can kick him out from Alaska. At least by then, we'll be moved out of Virginia, at the cabin, unpacked and settled. And I think that'll allevi alleviate um, a lot of stress. So just leaving you with that. What I do know is when you retire from the military, any branch... You have home of record and then home of selection. So Joe's home of record, anyone's home of record, is where they joined the service from. So Joe, Joe and I were in California when he joined the Coast Guard because I was actually active duty in the Coast Guard in California. So his home of record is California. So if you get out of the military for any other reason than retirement, they will only pay to ship your household goods and your things back to your home of record. But if you retire from the military, you get to choose your home of selection. For us, we're choosing to retire in Alaska. And then the Coast Guard would pay for that. They pay for everything to get our household goods all the way to Alaska, ferry tickets, shipping my car, all of it. But now, if he gets kicked out four and a half months before retirement, they will only pay to get it to California. They'll get it to Alaska but we will be billed for the difference from California to Alaska. And I don't have a clue what that looks like, especially with inflation and gas prices. Like what is the cost of getting our household goods from California to Alaska, my car from California to Alaska, which actually we're thinking I might just drive my car, which sucks. I'd have to drive separate and that would just not be fun, but whatever, if that's cheaper than fine. So, the ferry tickets, they don't cover that if you're not retiring. We're choosing to go to Alaska, right? His home of records, California. So the ferry tickets as of right now are over $8,000. Now we could not take the ferry. We could drive all the way through Canada, um, which we might have to do anyway. <laughs> that was one of my updates I was going to give you guys. Uh, so it's just all up in the air. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if we're going to get to leave in October. I don't know if they're going to make him stay until they separate him, which could take months. And we're going to have to sit here through the winter and not go to the cabin until next year. I don't know what this looks like. So the other thing was originally we were going to take the ferry from Washington State up to Whittier, Alaska. We've taken the ferry several times when we were stationed in Alaska, and not only was it fun, it was a quicker way to get there. Um, and I was really hoping Parker could experience that. So we've been waiting for the winter schedule for the ferry system to come out. And I contacted them the other day, and they said, tentatively, the ferry system is not going through the Gulf of Alaska this winter at all. And I was like, nowhere? <laughs> like Homer, Valdez, like none of that? Nope. They said, we're not going from Bellingham, Washington to the Gulf at all. So that would mean 
we would have to take the ferry from Bellingham, Washington to Haines, Alaska, which is just underneath Canada. And then we would have to go through this teeny tiny corner of Canada to get back into Alaska to drive to our cabin. So now that requires all the things, all the requirements that the Canadian border has. Um, and we've called, we already contacted them and found out all the requirements. Um, some of the things that are gonna change for us, we cannot take all of our guns because we have a small arsenal and apparently the only thing you could take through Canada is rifles and shotguns. So all of our handguns and our AR-15s, anything like that, we now have to pay to ship with a gun dealer here in Virginia to ship up to a gun dealer in Alaska. Uh, COVID vaccine is not required to get through Canada, but we do have to show a negative test within 24 hours of arriving at the Canadian border. You know, it's, we have to be able to prove that we're residents of, we have a residency in Alaska, which I've got to bring the deed to our property to show we do have a cabin and a home there. We're retiring. We're, well, maybe, right? We're moving. We'll have our whole family, a truck with a loaded trailer, two dogs and our kid. Um, so I know there's been a lot of comments from some of you that have watched other channels that struggled getting through Canada, but the struggles they had, we don't have. Um, they're not requiring the COVID vaccine anymore. We are not going up there just to do a couple weeks of work and then come back. We're going up permanently. We do have a residence with a house on it, not just land. Um, so the challenges that some of these other people faced getting through the border, uh, we have overcome those challenges. So we already talked to the border and uh, are clear on what's required. We were told passports are not needed as long as we had birth certificates. However, I don't trust anybody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Lolita on the phone, she could have said that, but she might not know what she was talking about. Or maybe she was having a bad day when I talked to her and she wasn't really listening to me. I don't know. So I told Joe, I'm like, Parker already has a passport. We do too, but they're expired. So we already paid and sent out to get new passports because I am not going to get to the Canadian border and have them turn us away because we don't have passports. Like just because we don't need them today doesn't mean by the time we get there that won't have changed. And um, Canada, the laws and everything, especially at the border, are just a little unpredictable. So I'd rather not take any chances. So um, that was one update I was going to give you guys is we are now going to have to go through Canada as of right now, unless the schedule changes, it's tentative. The November schedule for the ferry has not come out as of the time of this recording, but they told me tentatively that's what they have scheduled. No, no sailings through the Gulf of Alaska. I just want to ask you guys for prayer. I believe in the power of prayer and I know there's a lot of you out there that are in our situation with this mandate, whether it's your civilian job or the military, and I want to commend you for standing your ground. No matter what your convictions are for not getting it, I commend you for standing your ground, and I want you to know you're not alone. As far as Joe's pension, um, I've had people say, wow, you're willing to give all that up just for a vaccine. It's not just a vaccine. It is principle and it is so much more than that. And especially the fact that scientifically and logically it doesn't make sense anymore, but they're still pushing it. And the way that they are treating service members and I've watched it with my own eyeballs, yeah, damn straight, we ain't getting it. It is principle. And I wouldn't bend over and take it for any amount of money or benefits any amount. Of course he want his pension. He deserves that. He, he worked for that and he sacrificed his life for the military. But at the end of the day, if it comes down to that, they can have it. They can have it all. In four and a half months, whether he gets kicked out or we get to retire, this will all be over and we will be free. For now, we are standing our ground and we will fight this to the very end. But you guys, the Lord says we are going to be persecuted. If you dare to stand against the grain, if you dare to take the, the hard path instead of the easy path, you're going to get hell for it. We will not back down. We will not give in. And then they, they said with his notice of intent to discharge, he has five days to provide a statement to give a rebuttal to their decision. 
And I told Joe, I'll be damned if I'm going to write another statement for the Coast Guard. We sat down and wrote an 18-page religious accommodation request that they denied with a blanket denial like every other Coastie that submitted one. And then we did the same thing for his appeal to that denial, just for them to send another blanket denial with verbiage that was the same as everybody else's. Why in the world should I, we have to beg and grovel again and rewrite this whole statement, begging them to let him stay in and retire. Do you know what his statement's gonna say? See enclosed religious accommodation request. See enclosed religious accommodation appeal. If you're wondering what his rebuttal is, if you're wondering what his statement is, it's all right there. I'm not wasting another minute of my time with this Coast Guard. Shame on you, Coast Guard. Shame on you. You are despicable for the way that you are treating your members. And it's nothing but hypocrisy. When the mandate first came out, they came out with a message that all unvaccinated members couldn't go outside of 50 miles of their duty station. We had just bought plane tickets to go home to see Joe's family in Arizona. And we had to cancel those plane tickets because he was now grounded because he was so dirty and unvaccinated and couldn't go outside of 50 miles of his unit. But vaccinated members could go wherever they wanted to. Same thing with masks. Vaccinated members at first weren't required to wear masks, but if you were unvaccinated, you had to wear them and you were separated because you're dirty. What is that? That's hazing. That's segregation, discrimination. How are we getting away with that? But after we canceled the plane tickets to go home to Arizona to see Joe's family because he was unvaccinated, the Coast Guard turned around and deployed Joe to the border in Arizona to help with border ops for a month. He was unvaccinated. Like, how does that make sense? Oh, I forget, needs of the service. Needs of the service. So when it's convenient for you, he can fly unvaccinated and go serve at the border. But when it's not convenient for you and you don't need him, you can throw him away like he's a piece of trash. I was so sad today when Joe called you guys because the sound of his voice on the phone you guys know Joe, and he's not an emotional person, and he's pretty introverted and pretty quiet. That's just how Joe's always been. But when I tell you I've seen my husband break down and cry tears and just look at me and say, Tina, I just wanted to make it. My heart is broken for him. I don't care about the money. I don't. My heart is sad for him because this is... This is Joe's legacy. This is what Joe did. He served his country. And now he is at risk of losing it all. We have tried in every way to get the word out about what the military is doing. And it feels hopeless because no one's doing anything about it. But I know when you feel hopeless and there's nowhere else to turn, and you're defeated and you physically can't do anything about your situation, that is when God comes in and that is when God works. And we don't understand it sometimes, you guys, but sometimes God lets things happen because he needs to show you, like, you don't have the control you think you have. So I find comfort in that. And I think God is just bringing us to our knees right now. And he's saying, here you are with all your plans. And he's, uh, he's got a bigger plan for us, and I trust him because he's never let me down. So um, I don't think there was anything I forgot to mention. I just, I know so many of you email me and comment me or comment to me about this whole situation and wondering how Joe's doing. Um, that's how we're doing. <laughs> we got some really crappy news today. Um, and I don't really know where it's going to go from here, you guys. But I do know we'll be at the cabin soon, one way or the other, whether they kick him out or they let him retire. Um, and if you can keep us in your prayers and pray for an injunction from the judge for the Coasties, uh, or that his command endorsement is um, accepted, I would really appreciate those prayers. And um, 
I appreciate all of you and I'm, I'm overwhelmed, especially with the Alaska videos that I put up the last couple weeks. We have so many new subscribers and you guys, I read every single comment. I need you to know that. <laughs> Cause I know there's a lot of YouTubers that don't, they don't even check comments. I read every single comment Joe and I do. And I try to reply to as many as I can. Um, but I just wanna thank you. You guys are so encouraging. And I hope that we're an encouragement to you, even during this dark time that we're going through. So I'm gonna go for now, but I look forward to your guys' comments and check out the description of this video. I'm gonna link some stuff there. Um, we love you guys. We appreciate your support and encouragement and uh, I will update you very soon.